And we are back with another project video. I'm Sean from Craft Elements. Thank you for joining me again. If it's your first time, welcome. Uh, and this video is gonna be a little bit different because typically we use our molds or templates or whatever else crazy contraptions we're selling to help you uh, learn and discover our products to make things for other people, to sell them, to give them away, whatever you choose to do. However, in this project, uh, we're gonna be doing things that you're gonna be using yourself internally in your shop or studio. And I'm uh, talking about one, organization of pigments and two, sampling of pigments. So I wanna talk about one of our friends, Black Diamond Pigments. They are, of course, one of the biggest pigment providers in uh, the industry. We love the baggies that back, uh, Black Diamond Pigments send to us. They have a bajillion colors, it seems. But you know what I hate about the Black Diamond Pigment baggies that they send to us? The Black Diamond Pigment baggies that they send to us. So these are great, you know, they're awesome. They're a bunch of free colors. Thanks for Black Diamond for sending them out to us, of course. But organizing them is a feat. It, uh, it's a disaster, it's a mess. So what we're gonna do today is two different projects. We're gonna be making small little acrylic organizers on one of our Laguna lasers. We're also gonna be selling the kits for these organizers. So if you wanna, if you think this is a good idea and you have the same problem with all these little baggies in your shop, and you wanna have a nice little filing system for them, we're gonna be selling the kits that you can just glue together, so stay tuned for that. But also, I'm gonna take some of our most popular colors that we use, as well as our uh, five by four, so 20 coaster mold, and make samples that we can then, you know, keep in our uh, shop or warehouse, so we can easily sample when we're making projects or showing something to a customer. So people have made sample boards, obviously before there's nothing new. Uh, they're typically using, say, a piece of maple or walnut drilling, you know, a two or three inch hole in them, mixing and putting the resin in there. Fine, does a job, but it's limited to that wood, right? When you're using the pigment within that wood, it's really hard to see what it's gonna, or visualize rather, what it's gonna look like on say cedar or walnut or wenge or whatever other wood you're using. So when you have a solid resin coaster uh, per se, um, you can take that coaster, put it up to the piece of the wood that you're gonna, uh, you're gonna use and say, mm, is that gonna be a good combination? So that's what this project's gonna be. Let's get started by designing our acrylic uh, enclosure and then we'll move to making our samples. Okay, so I've loaded up Lightburn, which is the common software we use for uh, doing laser uh, vector design. Um, so we've got the black diamond pigment baggies. There's actually really two kinds they offer. The vast majority that we get are these ones. And of course, if you make a, a holder that's gonna fit these ones, it's also gonna fit these. So we're gonna use these as our reference. And they are two and three eighths inches wide. The height doesn't really matter because we're gonna have it a little bit higher. So let's make the, the pockets two and a half inches wide to give it a little bit of an area uh, move to move around in. And we'll make them two and a half inches tall. Pretty simple, square pockets, square channels. All right, let's get started. Okay, so we completed this design, fairly basic. We have a bottom, of course, to our container. We've got three walls, three main walls, and then two end caps. So these green lines here are going to be etched into the acrylic, just so we know exactly where that middle wall needs to be and how it's gonna line up so we can keep it all straight. The other two walls are just gonna obviously be on the edge of the acrylic. It's not a big deal. We don't need any lines to keep them straight. And I went ahead and I reversed the Black Diamond Pigments logo. So it's actually going to uh, fill in this logo from behind the ac acrylic to create a kind of a cool effect. And that will be from the inside of the box. I will show you in a second. So we're gonna go ahead, bring this design over to one of our three uh, Big Laguna lasers and we're gonna cut it. Our laser cutting is done. I've grabbed them from our machine. We've got all of our pieces here and I also had some extra space on the sheet. So I cut some little separator cards that will actually go between um, the colors. So if you want to have green in one space and blue in another, you can use these to separate the 
cards, so that was kind of an optional item. I'm gonna go ahead and do the fun process of peeling all the paper off these, and uh, maybe I uh, will fast forward this part. Okay, all the papers off our pieces. So we are ready to assemble this. Now assembly, this is gonna be something that's really important. So just stay with me a second. Um, to assemble these things, the best product to use is one of the Weld On or Side Grip products. This is acrylic cement. It's an acrylic solvent. So it's quite literally bonding the plastic together. If you use hot glue, it's not gonna work. You could probably do use CA glue. It's just not gonna be as easy. It's not gonna be as thick. It'll probably still work but I don't think it's gonna have quite the bond that something like this would. Now this is a number 16 fast set clear solvent cement. It's a large size, but you can get the 1.5 ounce sizes. I think it's a five ounce size. But you can get the 1.5 ounce sizes, which is plenty enough for this project for like $6 on Amazon. So if you're gonna build one of these yourself, just go and spend the $6 on the proper stuff. Now, the reason I'm using this stuff instead of this liquid is that, um, the edges of these are generally perfect, but they could be slightly imperfect. They might be at like a 87 degree angle, depending on how the laser was aligned, the laser kerf, and of course the air on the laser creating a little bit of a tiny roughness on the top, um, just from the air blowing in when, it, when, the, when the plastic's remelting itself. So this stuff's gonna be way more forgiving than this. It's gonna have a, a thicker, almost, almost uh, hot glue-like consistency. It's very, very gelatinous, whereas that's liquid. So I definitely recommend using this to assemble this project over a liquid uh, well-done product. All right, let's get started here. So something important to mention, this stuff is nasty. It is definitely not something you want to inhale. Um, so make sure you, you do this outside or use a respirator. They also have these little tips that you can buy to, um, to attach to the end to make the application super, super fine. I'm not gonna go ahead, I'm not gonna use one of those for this. Um, if I was like selling this as like a you know, super nice project to someone, I'd really care about any, I, I would care more about sloppy glue work, but this is for my own use. Uh, it's completely up to you how anal you want to be when doing your glue up. So I'm going to do this really quickly, put my mask on and get started. So as you can imagine, this stuff is called fast set. It sets very, very fast. It's typically bonded within a couple of minutes. You can kind of move it around and see that nothing's falling apart. Um, but you're really not gonna get a good bond for about 10 or 20 minutes. So don't put your pigments in right away. Give it at least 20 minutes. It does take 24 hours to fully cure. It's kind of like resin that way. But honestly, unless you're gonna be throwing this thing around, you can put your pigments in it within about 10 minutes. Also, a quick tip, if you wanted to get really uh, specific about your corners uh, when you are doing that glue up, use some masking tape um, and then just kind of do this to keep those corners really, really tight together. For our purposes, it doesn't really matter. I don't care if it's off by like a 32nd or a 64th of an inch. It does the job, it's a nice container. And we'll wait a few minutes and we'll load up our stuff. And as you can see, these little separators sit in there really, really nicely.
Well, that's it. That is part one of this project done. I've got my nice little pigment filing system. So again, uh, I will definitely be offering these uh, pre-cut pieces on our website. These separators will be an optional item. Um, if you, I don't know if you actually need them. You can make your own out of wood if you wanted to. Um, but basically you're gonna be able to get all the panels and all you need to do is assemble it with some acrylic uh, cement like we did uh, just a few minutes ago. So now that this part of the project's done, I'm gonna pull out 20 of my favorite to use, uh, my, my top popular pigments, I guess you could say, pull those out and get started on my pigment coaster samples. So first thing I'm gonna do is grab our big 20 coaster mold. I've got it here on a piece of plywood just to make it moving, uh, moving it off the, the table a little bit easier because I plan to do some other projects today with a table saw here and I don't want sawdust all over this thing. With any of our molds, silicone, uh, specifically, no matter you're getting them from us or someone else, you need to use a mold release and you need to use a non-silicone mold release. Putting a silicone, i.e. a release spray made of silicone on a silicone mold doesn't really do much. It's like putting acrylic paint on acrylic paint and expecting it to come off. You need a normal uh, non-silicone mold release. One of the favorite ones that we use frequently and that you've probably seen me talk about numerous times, MG Chemicals 8329. There are a few other mold releases on the market, of course, that are non-silicone based that will work for this application. So put on your respirator or do this outside. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pick out 20 of my uh, favorite pigments and we'll mix up some Maker Epoxy by Total Boat and uh, get started pouring these sample coasters. So word of the wise, uh, before you start mixing and pouring and putting your pigments in, take a photo above all the pigments that you've laid out or print off a four by five grid, uh, like a picture on, from Google Images and write down which color each one is because the last thing you want to do is, be have, have, is have to figure out which color is which when you demold these. So each one of these coasters is actually roughly four and a half ounces. So we technically need about 90 ounces of material to fill up this entire thing. However, I don't need to fill those coasters to half an inch. So I've gone ahead, mixed up just over 64 ounces of Maker Poxy. And I'm using Maker Poxy uh, by Total Boat and Just Crow because it is a thick art resin. So the thickness is a good thing. It's going to allow us to uh, mix our pigment in and not have it settle. So basically once we mix the pigment and kind of swoosh it around, it's gonna stay that way. It's not all gonna sink to the bottom, which makes it really good for doing uh, samples like this. And you know, this is a half inch deep mold. So there's no reason we can't use this because it is good for, you know, quarter inch uh, to half inch deep small pours. I have actually used this stuff for three quarter to one inch small castings, but only in low volumes. So for a half inch uh, casting or up to a half inch casting, something that's gonna hold the paint really well, this is a good solution. And I appreciate Total Boat and Jess Crow at Maker Poxy for sending it to us to use in the shop when we do these videos. So I've transferred some of our material from our large bucket to our smaller bucket just to make it easier to pour. And remember, we've already covered uh, this mold with mold release. Now, why am I doing it this way instead of pre-mixing the epoxy uh, with the pigment? Well, in any other project, I would do that, but I do not want to have 20 different cups. Uh, so I'm really just hoping I can put enough epoxy in here pour the pigment in and then softly uh, mix it around. Rather, mix it around with a soft mixing device. So that's the plan. Hopefully it works out.
So I strategically selected the small black diamond pigment packs instead of the larger ones. And I'm going to just use roughly half a pack per um, coaster. But of course, if you wanted to get really specific about it or you have larger packs that you want to do this with or maybe the black diamond, uh, you know, with circular uh, containers, you could just use a little scoop and then just clean it every time with a, a wipe or uh, an air compressor or whatever before you do the next one. Right, we got our heat gun plugged in, and we're just going to go over and pop all these bubbles out here. Depending on the look you're going for, we can come back in half an hour, an hour once this is a little bit more set up, and swirl them again so you don't have that more uniform square texture. Um, but otherwise, that is how we're making our pigment trays. And we're back 24 hours later and our coasters, or rather our resin samples in our coaster mold has, have fully set. And again, this is using the Maker Epoxy product, sets in like 12 to 24 hours. So all we're really going to need to do now is pop these out and uh, we're pretty much done our project. However, what I did off camera to make things a little bit more efficient, because we're all about efficiency here at Brad's Dummy, is printed the names in order, left to right, up and down, like you'd read a book uh, of all these colors. So as I demold them, I'm going to label them. Uh, it only makes sense to do that, otherwise it's gonna be an absolute nightmare to try and figure out which color is which. So as I pop these out, stick a sticker on the back and then we're done. Okay, well, that's the end of this video. Um, we used our 20 coaster mold to create some black diamond pigment samples, uh, which are gonna be really helpful for around your shop or studio. If you, uh, if you want to preview what a color is gonna look like with wood, or you wanna show your customer in advance what the table's gonna look like with a particular color resin, certainly helpful for that because as you know, people are visual learners. Some people just can't visualize and that's what these samples are gonna be good for. I'm not suggesting you go and buy this mold uh, just to make resin samples or color samples, but if you've already got one of our 20 coaster molds, or our 50 coaster molds, which we had earlier in the year, or even our four coaster mold, this is an ideal use for uh, that mold uh, to give you something for your own particular use that's gonna save you a little bit of time and maybe help you sell some product. Um, and of course, if you wanna do this and you don't have one of these molds, there's a bajillion other uses you can make a set of, you know, 20 coasters uh, with resin or resin and wood or whatever. So it's a great mold to have in the shop if you're doing small projects like this. And of course, that mold is available at craftedelements.com along with the other 80 or 90 plus mega size durable silicone molds uh, for makers and woodworkers that we offer. And for a limited time, I don't know how limited, we'll see how it goes, um, you can buy the acrylic kit, uh, these pre-cut pieces to build your own black diamond baggy pigment storage organizer. Uh, basically, you can build your own box. So we're gonna have that on our website as well. You'll just need to get the adhesive to uh, attach it all together, which you saw in the video. Super easy to do, and obviously this is really handy. But on a little Rolodex, if you're born past uh, 1995, you probably don't know what a Rolodex is, but it's okay, it's good. So, hope you enjoyed this video. For more, make sure you subscribe here on YouTube, because I'm always doing some cool projects. 
with our molds, our templates. We've got some other cool products in the line coming up this year. So make sure you subscribe on YouTube, follow us on Instagram or TikTok at Crafted Elements Co. Thank you for watching. Have a good day. Yada, yada, yada. Happy making.